Welcome to Fegan and Finch, the podcast where we discuss everything football related. I'm Alex Finch. And I'm Ryan Fegan. Let's talk football. So for this week, Ryan came up with a great idea, a great topic for us to discuss. And that is the best players to have never won the Ballon d'Or. And we've just, we just been talking about recent history, so since 2000. And as always, we're trying to agree upon the best of whatever topic we're talking about. So this, this time, we'll try and agree upon the best player to have, never, to have never won it in recent history. It's going to be hard, but as always, we'll get there. We'll agree upon it. And I think, if, if you're happy to, I'll give a bit of background. Yeah, you go for it, my friend. So I'll go a bit of background on the award because there's some things people probably get confused by with the Ballon d'Or. It's, as most people know, it is an annual football award presented by the France, the French football magazine, France Football. And it's awarded to the player, judged to play the best over the course of the previous year. And in, in my opinion, the award is the most prestigious award out there. It's definitely the oldest since 1956 it's been going, but I think it's the most prestigious, not just because the name, the name's beautiful, it gives me, gives me chills. It is, it is a gorgeous name, the Ballon d'Or. <sighs> chills, spine, tingling. But the reason I think it's the most prestigious is, is because it is a very fair award as well. And overall it's got a great history great set of winners and people do get confused it's worth pointing this out between the Ballon d'Or and the FIFA World Player of the Year because there was a period between 2010 and 2015 that both organisations came together so FIFA and France Football came together and merged their awards to the FIFA Ballon d'Or so people still think that the Ballon d'Or is an award from FIFA but it's not because that partnership ended in 2016 and since then, both organisations revert back to their own awards to the Ballon d'Or and the FIFA World Player of the Year. And in my opinion, everyone knows about FIFA, the, the rigging, the conspiracies, the bribes. Big controversies, and, yeah, yeah, big controversy. Probably not in the face of it, the fairest award because it probably has been bribes in the past, where if you look at the Ballon d'Or, look at the voting system details, it's a very fair award. So that's, that's why I think it is prestigious because you... Let's just go into it. So for the Ballon d'Or, you have football journalists, coaches and captains of national teams voting. So it's quite a good system there, a lot of, lot of influences. And it's probably worth pointing out as well, and this is one of the reasons why we're only looking at recent history, it's because the way voting has changed recently with the Ballon d'Or. So it's only been since 2007 that coaches and captains could vote. Before then, it was just, just football journalists because it was an award awarded by a magazine. And... Mm-hmm. It's only since 2007, actually, that all professional football players have been eligible because before 2007, it was only footballers who were playing at European clubs. So that's ruled out a lot of, lot of past footballers. And I think before, before that, so before all professional fo- footballers were eligible and then those only playing at European clubs, it was eligibility was restricted to only European-born football, footballers. So you have to be born in a European country to win it. And maybe this was before 2000, this, this rule applied. So because of these rules, the likes of Pelé and Maradona could never win it. And they never did win it. Pelé because he never played in Europe. Maradona because he played in Europe at the time. Only European-born players could win it. So even though he probably was the best player in the world for a few years at Napoli, set the world alight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I think he probably definitely was the best player in Europe at times because he wasn't born. Oh, no, 100%. Yeah. He couldn't win it. So... That's one of the reasons when you'll be looking at recent history. We'll probably look at since 2000, just because there are players like Pelé and Maradona who would, want it, would have won it if the rules yeah, that'd be, had that'd been be the different. obvious pick. Yeah. yeah. So, probably let's, let's dig into it. There has been some surprising winners like Owen Modric, even Nedved. But who, who yeah. should have won it? Who should have won it? Do you want to go with the first pick? I'll kick things off, Finch. I'll go for the, uh, the 2004 Ballon d'Or. Um, It was won by Andrei Shevchenko after a successful Champions League campaign with AC Milan and a uh, a very good Serie A campaign with, obviously, AC Milan, uh, won the title. Um, Obviously, he got first place. However, coming coming second was was Thierry Henry. Um, I I do believe Thierry Henry should have won it that year. I really, really do. You look at his stats, he had 46 goals in all competitions, which amounted to a European golden boot, which meant more goals scored than Andrei Shevchenko, his, um, his strike rival. Uh, you know, a Premier League champion, not just a Premier League champion, he won the Golden Premier League, which, and 
honestly, I believe Arsenal will probably be the only team to ever win the Golden Premier League just because of the intensity today. Um, I don't believe that any other team can really can stay unbeaten for 38 games. It's that luck as well. You need that luck. And they had that luck yeah. when Van Nistelrooy missed that penalty. And there's just yeah. certain things that got to fall into place. It was just happened, didn't it? Yeah, mate, 100%. Uh, he won the PFA Player of the Year that year as well. Um, easily the best player in the league. Assists, they speak for themselves. An absolutely fantastic player. I think it's an absolute robbery that this man has never won the Ballon d'Or ever. You could, you could pick a handful of years. You could have picked 2006. Mm-hmm. 2003. Uh, I've gone for 2004. I feel like that's his best year for stats and accomplishments. I can only think the reason why he didn't get it was because of uh, the Champions League campaign. Arsenal did not have a very good Champions League campaign. Um, and also the Euros campaign was very, uh, very shocking uh, for yeah. France. Because when, when you look at the Ballon d'Or over history, reason history anyway, it's mainly been awarded based on who's won the Champions League, who won the World Cup. And probably Henri yeah. was unlucky that the emergence of Very a young unlucky. Ronaldinho in 2000, that era, he was, Ronaldinho was amazing, won the Ballon d'Or 2005, I think. And then 2006, yep. 100% Henri would have won it if France won the World Cup. But you had Cannavaro and you had Buffon, who obviously won the World Cup with Italy, and they finished first and second in the Ballon d'Or runnings that year. And, and overall, I completely agree with Thierry Henry and what a, what a player he was. A magician legend of the game. And he, he won yeah. it all. You, you think about it, two Premier Leagues, two La Ligas, the Champions League, three, three FA Cups, the World Cup, the European Championships, all-time Arsenal goal scorer. What, what more can you golden do? Boot. What, what more can you do? He was a goal scoring machine. That, I think that's, that's the consistency of that which makes and stands that, out and the Finch, rest. Finch, not just a goal scoring machine, he also holds the record for the most assists in a Premier League campaign. Incredible. And when I say goal scoring machine, I don't just mean a normal goal scoring machine. Like, there's a lot of goal scoring machines in, in Premier League history. You have Aguero, you have Ruben Nishore. He won the Golden Boot four times and is the only ever player to have scored more than 20 goals in five successive seasons. And that, that, that is some feat. And That's just, scary. Just look at the that stats. is scary. Just look at the stats. Um, 226 goals and 369 appearances for Arsenal. Part of that invincible size, we got 30 goals in 2003-2004 and even for France, 51 goals, 123 appearances. And I'm, I'm thinking at the moment that goal where it hits his hand against Ireland, but I, I don't know why because I don't really know many of his French goals. But overall, for the, in the Premier League, so many goals for France, over 50 goals. What a goal scorer. And some great goals as well. And I was, I'm just thinking of that, that little half, half volley. When he chips it up against United, swivels, turns, flicks it, well, hit, hits that it was disgusting. from left to right into the top corner. Absolutely disgusting. Amazing man. finish. Amazing. Bartos had no clue. I, know, I don't think any goalkeeper could deal with that just, just because how smooth it was and how quick he did the whole movement. Just flicks it up, hits it, goes straight just in. Just to even think about doing something like that on a football field is... That's the I mean, route. That's the. Yeah, it just sums up. Yeah, the genius he is because he it's just that 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 is the swagger. He had it, a pure swagger. He's yeah, dribbling. He had it all. And I'm, I'm thinking was, now as well. He that finish. He ma- he made his own a finish where he would be running on the left hand channel. He looks like he's going to shoot with his left foot. He looks like he can only shoot with his left foot, and he somehow yeah. bend his body round to open up and shoot with his right foot whilst he almost was falling over. And he scored so many goals like that. I can't. I think Danny Wilbert tried to replicate it a bit and got injured a lot of the time. But <laughs> there's not been a player since who has like that finish where it is his own. He obviously had it with the Brazilian Ronaldo going around goalkeepers, but Thierry Henry had that finish where he would sort of open his body up. Just just yeah. an amazing player. And to, to, to be a great goal scorer and great assist merchant, to have those two, like you said, a complete player, because 20, 20 assists in one campaign. And that year is where he got 24 goals. Yep. And so that was 2000, 2003. And that, that year he came second to Nedved. So with those kind of stats and with Arsenal not doing the best, because that was 2000, 2003. I think Arsenal, only, mm-hmm. did they win the FA Cup that year? Uh, I, believe, I, I, I believe they won the FA Cup. I'm not 100% sure yeah. on that. 
So I think maybe he won something more that year. It's he, he might have won it, but I think his peak years was between 2003 to 2006. But if you look yeah. look at him, look at what he did after Arsenal as well. He had he had a great spell at Barcelona. It's easy to forget that when he when he went there, no Spanish team had won a treble before. So like, when I say treble, I mean Champions League, Copa del Rey, La Liga, so a proper a proper treble. So proper, yeah. with Barca, he inspired the first ever treble. It's been happened. It's happened quite a few times since with Madrid and Barca. But at that time, that was the when he went there and under Guardiola, he inspired that team to win the first treble. He was a key part of that. And he got 26 goals in that campaign. So that's don't lie, as I said. So to go to do, do everything in England, he did everything there. He it won is, the yeah, Cup, won European everything. Championships. And then he went to Barcelona yeah. and won the Champions League, topped everything off. Fantastic player. Absolutely fantastic player. In 2004, it was a great year for him, a year that I, I believe he should have won the uh, Ballon d'Or over Shevchenko. Uh, honorary mention that year uh, for me, Finch, I don't know if you agree with this one. Uh, Deco getting a shout. Yeah, Deco's worth a shout. But, a fantastic but, Champions League campaign, winner of the League of Portuguesa, uh, played numerous man of the match, had numerous man of the match performances in that, uh, in that campaign for the Champions League. Probably a memorable uh, win at Old Trafford, I remember. Mm. Very, very good shout, but just Henri just has, I think, just oh, because of what, what, what a play. He was a complete player, and I think, like I said before, the only reason he didn't win it is because he didn't win the Champions League the right year. He didn't win the World the Cup right year. I think, actually, if 2006, if he, he either won the Champions League or the World Cup, he would have won it. It's just, I think it just shows that only two Italian players were ahead of him. Just, they were great, got great to, players. Got but, to the final in both. Mm, yeah. Got to the final on both, and it was literally just because he didn't win one. Because usually, when you win the bundle, obviously you've got to play brilliant, but it's usually when you win something else as well. Your club side yeah. usually wins something that sort of sways it a little bit. Whereas with Henri, he's just absolute great individual player, and unlucky that that year we he should have won in 2003, I think, with Nedved, he came second. But that year where it seemed like everything was going to fall into place, Italy won the World Cup, and kind of our own booth on got ahead of him. So a player who, when you look at it, he had a sustained period at the top where he could have won it. Whereas there's not many players. Yeah. We'll go through quite a few players, I think, but there's not many who will, who will have that claim where they could say, I could have won it over a five-year period. I think we'll look at other no. players who could have won it one year or another. Like Deco. Deco could have won it that year when Porto won the Champions League. But could he, win it? Could he have won it any other year? I don't think so. So, no, no, definitely not. Definitely not considering the uh, the talent that was at Barcelona when he left. Mm. Porto. Yeah, complete, completely agree. But what what a player Decker was, and just a bit, just a bit sad. I probably I don't know about you, but I definitely didn't see the best of him because I mainly watched him when he was at Chelsea. Still a good player. He was a, a fantastic player at Chelsea. Obviously a Premier League winner, uh, FA Cup winner. Uh, scored some fantastic goals for us. I remember. Um, Bolton, Bolton away, where he scored this uh, this fantastic uh, scissor kick, absolutely fantastic goal. But like you say, he was getting on; his age was starting to show. Um, but I am glad that we did get to experience Deco for you know a couple of seasons at least in the Premier League, even if he didn't um, excel as well as he used to. Was it? And um, it's on Scolari, wasn't it? Where he's brought in Luis Felipe it was Scolari. On, on the Scolari. Um, he was brought in and then he won the Premier League under Angelotti. Of course. Yeah, he had that great, like, was it 10 games fell, 15 games fell under Scolari, then he just went off the boil. No, Completely. That's, that's exactly it. Age just started showing, mate. Yeah, no, no, I mean, with, with, with Scolari, I mean, Scolari just had that 10, ten game spell. Oh, well. Scolari had the 10 game spell. Yeah. yeah. Remember, great, great football, and then suddenly, like, everyone would say, oh, Chelsea are unfit. This player's unfit. Everyone's unfit. Yeah, something mm. something wasn't right. Yeah, right. Should, do you want me to give another shout? Go for it, my friend. Who's your next pick? So this player, probably a bit surprising. This shout is he, is, he isn't everyone's cup of tea. Gets injured a lot, um, dives quite a bit. Isn't doesn't have the best fair play record, but what a player he is. And the stats don't lie. You can't deny his ability. And that's that's Neymar. And I, I think. If Ronaldo or Messi who weren't around, it's easy to say because our godlike players, they weren't around. 
Yeah. He probably would have won it at least once in the last five years. He came third in 2015 and third in 2017. So, and obviously third to the, those two players. So he would he would have actually won it if if they weren't around. Had, yeah, had Ronaldo and uh, Messi not been around, Neymar would probably be a two or three time winner of the um of the Ballon d'Or. Definitely. Yeah, and he wouldn't have left Barcelona. So his career probably would have would have been a lot different. Because the reason he went to PSG is. To try and be that stand-up player and <laughs> look what happened and Bappe emerged. Whereas, exactly, yeah. You get out of Messi's shadow and you immediately go into Mbappe's shadow. Yeah, didn't, didn't work out. But if you still look at his stats when he has been the main man for Brazil, 61 goals for his country, only one behind El Phenomenal. Uh, he'll he'll right. break that record. He'll break that national record for Brazil. Yeah. And his, over, his overall stats are crazy. 490 appearances, 310 goals. That's, that is, by the age of 28, he has a fair amount of years left. He's, he's won at all the cup level. The, the, the goals that he's scored, they haven't just been little tap-ins either. They have been some world-class goals. I always remember that one for Santos that won the, um, that won the, the goal of the year where he just mm. skinned like four players, four or five players in a row and just struck it so sweetly into the net. Absolutely beautiful goal. I love that goal. And it, he scored some, he's a big game player as well. Because when you look, I'm trying to think of the time Barcelona, but the time which, the goal which like comes to my mind is the one he scored against PSG. When they, they had that like, amazing comeback and he scored that free oh, goal. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Free. And then I think, I'm pretty sure he set up Sergio Roberto go in the last minute. He did. He did. Because Messi was off the pitch, I think. So he inspired that comeback at that point. He's, he's a big game player. And he's, he's won it all at club level. He's been unlucky of injuries. And I always think what might have, could, might have been in that 2014 World Cup without injuries. Because he was, he was firing all cylinders left, right, centre, getting goals in his home country and then got injured. That's again. it. And he got injured against Colombia, wasn't it? I think so. But we know, we know what happens after that, don't we? Oh yeah, that Germany routing. That and Germany then, sausage fest. It was. They the Germans were loving it. Barbaria fest. Mm-hmm. October first, twenty four seven. Beautiful. Two thousand. What a scene that was. Germany twenty fourteen. But yeah, go, mm. going back to Neymar, he's been in the FIFA year, team of the year twice as well. And you look at Barca at that point. He was there. The MSN. What. What a strike for us. Possibly the Mate. best three I've ever seen, maybe? Yeah, that's my yeah, 100% for me. The greatest front three of all time. It's absolutely world-class all over the board. You say, you said that Neymar could win it. Luis Suarez could have also had a shower this Ballon d'Or Finch had Messi and Ronaldo not been there. You know, not been, about, not been around. Hmm. No, de- definitely. If you look at, I think the best... He obviously had, I think, the second season at Barcelona in incredible stats, like 40 goals, 45 appearances in the league, I think. Yep. As well, well 59 yeah. goals, 53 appearances overall, 20, 2015, 2016. That's when they won it all. So Luis Enrique was like, oh, got Messi, Neymar, Suarez. Like, let's just win it all. And they did. Yeah, they really did. Just a cheat code having that, having that front three. Literally, you could just say, all right, lads, you hang back. I've got Messi, Suarez, Neymar. They'll do it. Mm. Don't worry. And then... Even before then, I remember his last season at Liverpool, 13-14, he got 31 goals and 33 appearances and he was banging in the goals. And I, Although the reason him and Neymar probably haven't won is because of their disciplinary and what they've been yeah. doing, the bad yeah, side. Bad but, boy, the bad boy sort of status about him around football. Mm. And like, it seems like the Ballon d'Or and those kind of awards, awards it does, as well as like football ability and what you've done over the previous year, it, is, it does take into account like the morals and that, that side of things. And those two players... Although I think Neil probably would have won it. Suarez may not have if if he had that bad boy attitude still. Because you yeah. look at, there's a season in England as well where he should have won the PFA player of the year. But he didn't get it because of what he did to Ivanovic. And exactly. I think the next year he sort of built up his reputation again. And then did win the, did win the PFA player of the year before he went to Barcelona. And yeah. Just the stats uh, he had at Liverpool uh, were, were crazy. Um, unbelievable stats, but, you know, as he went to Barcelona, just before that, he was uh, a silly boy yet again and then uh, decided to take a bite out of Giorgio Chiellini. No, it's awful. But he, he might have even done that to try and go get, get his move to Barcelona. Just Barcelona. Think, I'm going to 
oh, Liverpool don't want to let me go. What can I do to get that get that move? I'll, yep. I'll just buy another player. If everyone knows it. I'll have a buy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, the other one every thing at club level is he is Uruguay's top goal scorer as well and they've had some great strikes for Lan Cavani. He just, he's overall great player. Also scores at World Cups. That goal against England comes to mind. Well, eight two against England he scored, didn't he, in 2014? In the same game, yeah. Horrible feeling. Horrible feeling, that. But what? just overall, those those two players, as far as a name are, two players I think would have won it if, if Ronaldo and Messi went around. But we're in this. It depends what we're looking at. So if we're looking at players who would have won it in different eras, and they're, they're the players for us. But if we're looking at players who would who would have won it in the he should have won it, not would have won it, he should have won it in the in one of the seasons they played and they were better than mm-hmm. their peers over like the likes of Suarez and Neymar who maybe would have won it in a different era. So you yeah. look at Henri, he should have won it in at least two of those years, 2006, 2003 maybe. Maybe three of those years where he was at his peak. Yeah, 2004, 2006, 2003. Any of those years, he, he should have won it. He was the better than his peers. There's n- there's no there's no doubt in that. You don't have to say, oh, he would have won it in a different era because he should have won it in his era. When you just look at Neymar and Suarez, they weren't better than their peers because Messi and Neymar, Messi and Ronaldo, not Messi and Neymar, Messi and Ronaldo were the best, undoubtedly, in those years. So it just depends how we look at it. But I'm still leaning towards Henri. Yeah, definitely. Right, give me another one. I'm um, I'm ahead to the 2010 um, Ballon d'Or. Obviously, you know, Lionel Messi won it. But there's two picks for me who I feel probably could have had a bigger shout than Lionel Messi. Obviously, Lionel Messi, fantastic year for him. Um, goals galore that year for Lionel Messi. But the two... First, I'm going to pick is Andreas Iniesta, an absolute gem of a player, a legend of the game, will go down as one of the greatest midfielders of all time. Um, and I feel like he still has a bigger shout for the Ballon d'Or than what Messi did that year. Um, you know, this guy, he's a big game player, Finch, huge, mm. huge in that, champ, in that uh, World Cup final, scorer of the goal that won the whole tournament, the most prestigious club or international tournament that you can win. Best out there. The best, yeah. Best of the best. And Iniesta scored that goal. Um, you know, he won La Liga as well. Only thing that let Iniesta down that year, he's known for his goal contributions, um, like assist-wise. He got five assists that year and only one goal. He, um, mm. that, I feel like that really let him down. Um, yeah. I guess if you look at the stats, that's, that's what last tells the story. But then if you watch the games, you know he's the assist of the assist. He makes that pass yeah. before the pass he, of the yeah. goal. That's, that's he where he fits that in. He makes that play and then that play mm-hmm. frees up the next play to the goal. And you can't, you can't put that in stats. I love, I'm, I, I reckon in the future, they might have it now, they might have the assist of the assist. Yeah. The assist of the assist, wherever it, wherever it will be. They might have that in, in the future. Because I think that stat is is a good stat. If you had that stat for NES, you know, he'd probably be the, the top up, he's probably the top player for that stat in the last ten years. Mm-hmm. Absolutely but fantastic, can Andre. Come on, Opta. If you're listening, Opta, get on that. Yeah. <laughs> but with regards to NES, I thought like there's another um, another player who deserves an even better shout than him. You know who I'm going to say, Finch. Name begins with W, ends in R, is Wesley Schneider. An absolute what a gem of a, of, a, of a player that year. Fantastic. Won the treble with Inter Milan um, and Jose Mourinho. You had the, uh, the Coppa Italia, Syria, and the Champions League, where he played a pivotal role in, um, in all three of their competitions. And also got to the World Cup final. Um, where unfortunately was knocked out by Andre Iniesta's um, Andre Iniesta, sorry, goal right at the death. Um, mm. Had had Holland have won that, I do believe Reggie Schneider would have won the the World Cup. But I do feel Schneider was robbed because I feel he won the treble, and that's not something that a lot of players do a lot of, you know. 
Um, mm. Especially that that sign. You look at Iniesta when he won the trebles. He had he had Messi in front of him. He had the best yep. player potentially ever. That's another discussion, but potentially ever in front of him. A lot of people think mm-hmm. ever. I probably think ever now as well. But yeah, so you have you have Messi in front of you. Then you had Suarez. You had Eto. You had Ronaldinho. You had you had all types of Henri. You had all all the best players in the world in front of him. And alongside him, he had a player we're going to be talking about. I'm sure after this. So I won't I won't name him now, but. He had some great players alongside him in the field. You have Snyder when he won that treble at Inter Milan. That was a good team, but it wasn't it wasn't the best team in the world, and, and it was very defensive. Whereas Iniesta enjoyed the attacking Barcelona yeah. and Spanish teams. Goals galore that that team. That's why Messi got that's yeah. why Messi got the Ballon d'Or for all the goals that he scored. Mm. Um, when you look at Snyder and that Inter Milan, he was that attacking threat. That team. He Mourinho played yeah. quite defensive, and then he let Snyder have quite a free role in terms of being the attacking unit with. And then with Melita in front and Eto, but he was that yeah. he was the focal point of the attacking unit. So a lot, a lot depended on him and how he. Everything did. went through Wesley Snyder in that team. Mm. Everything, um, absolutely fantastic, and, and and done it for Holland as well at the World Cup. Yeah. A very key player, uh, getting him on the road to the World Cup final, and like I say, just a very unfortunate game where Holland just couldn't couldn't find that winner. Yeah, whereas you look at it now, the great Holland teams which have been like the past and mm-hmm. that is the closest they've ever got to winning the World Cup final. And you had like teams with Van Basten, Rijgaard, Ruud van Nisseroy, all all Dutch led Jack Stan, trying to think there's there's so many so many Edgar Davids, all all the great players from Netherlands in eras eras gone by. And mm-hmm. it was that Netherlands side which got closest and Schneider was a key part of that and it what what a play is overall, but I was, I was looking at something, something the other day actually, and so I read, and he said, I just didn't apply myself to the game properly, and they obviously had that great spell at Inter Milan, but he, he's like, he said if he applied himself to the game properly, because like, he just enjoyed party, enjoyed that lifestyle, if he applied himself the same way Ronaldo did, he thinks yeah. he would have won the Ballon d'Or at least once, and would have been up there for years to come, whereas he probably, after that spell at Inter Milan, completed the game really, so he, and he didn't really want to didn't seem like he, he wanted to stay at that top level. He went to Galatasaray when every year he was linked to United. I was thinking, you're going to be there soon. Every year. You're going to be there yep. soon. Like, and then every every year, every every January, no, it wasn't even just January in the summer. It was literally every day he was linked there. And I was thinking, mm-hmm. okay, you're going to go there. United, good fit. Okay, let's see it. Yeah, okay. and especially when they had Louis van Gaal in charge as well. Mm. Never happened. It was, just, it was just a bit weird that he never went. He went to Galatasaray instead. And that, he was a legend there. Did, did well there, won leagues. But, just seen, you, you can't say career unfulfilled because of what he what he does. But it seemed like he had a bit more to get, like, not bit more to give, but he could have given a bit more for longer. So he, his ability might have not increased, but his sort of length of time at the top might have increased a bit if he employed himself because he would have he might have won the Ballon d'Or because that, that year at Inter Milan, even at Ajax before then, Real Madrid did okay. But after he left Real Madrid, going to Inter under Mourinho. Just a play, he was in that team. He was that focal point. Unbelievable player. Fantastic player. Absolutely. I had all the talent. Um, it was just a shame that he didn't win that Ballon d'Or to, uh, to really see off his career. Mm. And it's just, that was his that was his peak here. And then Netherlands. Yeah. I, I actually, I think I want them to win that World Cup. I love that. I, I was always a big Spain fanboy for, um, for David Villa. For David Villa and Xavi, yeah, they were my two favourite um, players of that Spain team, the 2008 Euro winning team, the 2010. That it was always I was always cheering on Spain if England weren't in it. Mm, and that's those players. I think is it David Villa, Xavi, you have Torres. They were they were there from 2008 to 2012, that that whole era. And then that brings yeah. us on to Xavi. What a player he he probably could have won it, and could have won the Ballon d'Or yeah. a few years. I Xavi, think he, definitely. Maybe he came from Second or third? In he he came two second, years? I believe, in 2007. I believe in 2007. Might have been 2008. Yeah, and he, he was the... thing is, with Iniesta, he was that attacker unit. But I reckon if if you're going to decide between either one, if you could take one out of that Barcelona team and replace him with someone else, I think Xavi's the more indispensable person because he was the yeah. glue of the team and he sort of played a role that no one else He did. ran the show of that midfield. He ran the show. Mm. He was the glue. He was the glue of that midfield. Was he look at in the Est- in the Est- absolute world class midfield, one of the best midfielders of all time. But if you his role has been quite a few similar players to him in that role in terms of what he does, what he can do. And if if you took him out, you'd probably get someone else in, and Messi would do the same job. Whereas if you took Xavi out, 
right, playing that CDM and playing a long pass is too messy and too, to everyone. It's, and making the team tick is, you take them out, you don't, you don't realise how much work they do until you take them out. It's the same with United, completely different player, but with Michael Carrick, when you took him out, the same, mm. same type of thing where you realise how much work he does and how much he makes the team tick. And that's what Ch- Chavi did, probably the best, one of the best of all time in his, his position and just missed out because he was in an era of greatness. But was in was in the greatness himself with Spain and Barcelona. I, I don't really think it's a stretch to say he's one of the best midfielders of all time. No, oh mate, definitely not. Definitely not. Just trying to think, is is he the best Spanish player of all time? Who Xavi? Yeah. It's a shout. He's got a very, it? very, very good shout for for our accolade of being the greatest Spaniard of all time. Who else we got there? We got Raul. We got Iniesta. Butchagueno. Who? Butchagueno. Butchagueno. Do you know Butchagueno? Finch, Real Madrid legend, Butchagueno. Spain legend. <laughs> Wait a second. Let, let... Old scoring machine. No, I don't want to embarrass myself here, so I'm gonna Google this. I've been honest, maybe maybe that era of football I've just what missed about, out on. What about Distafa- uh, Distafa- Distafa- he, Yeah, he's was he from Argentina though, wasn't he? No, Spain, mate. Oh well, no, he he played for Spain. It's he's a weird one because he's played for Argentina, Colombia, and Spain. Um, I went, I said him because I remember he was. One of Real Madrid's top goal scorers. I just had to make sure he yeah, was actually di- Spanish. Yeah, Di Stefano. Mm. He, yeah, I don't, that, that was an era where like, that's why I thought Argentina because I knew he played for Argentina first. He's he was born in Argentina, Di Stefano. That's what I was saying. And he started his career. Yeah. But yeah, what a, one of the best players of his time. Same with that, um, Puskas. He he was Hungarian, but then played for Spain. Which I don't really understand mm. how the rules worked in those days because it seems like players played from a few countries, but. Who's this person you, you, you were talking about? Emiliano Bucciagueno. Okay. Dece- I don't think he's one of the best of all time, though. Now, yeah, now he says first, though, I know no, he is a striker, yeah. But if- yeah, he's got a good shot for being Spain. Mm. But what, I'm just, I'm just listing, off, um, listing, listing off names who could also have that sort of accolade. You know, you've got you can't also just write off defenders, you can say. Mm. Um, it, I don't know, I think it comes in the categories with with that. I feel like defenders, you can go with Poyol, Ramos, uh, Hierro, and then midfielders, you can go Xavi, Iniesta, forwards, David Villa. I, I think David Villa probably gets that acclaim to be in the record goal scorer, the amount of goals that guy scored. Mm. Also, and Torres has got to be up there for, for, for yes, strikes as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he scored that scored that goal in in the two thousand and eight final. Yep, the only goal of that two thousand eight final as well. Absolutely, mate. Spain have had probably the best the best sort of players among their among their history. A fantastic yeah, that, team, no matter what. But I, I, well, like there is one golden generation. Though. They that's 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 the thing. I think if you're looking at best Spanish player of all time, you have got to pick something between the 2008 2012 era. Because they, they didn't win anything before then. They didn't win anything. So then you look at the other eras. They were they were known before. It's quite crazy because they were known before that 2008 golden era. That as yeah. the underachievers, the underachieving country, because they didn't win anything. And then suddenly that team came around. They won everything. Yeah. There's a handful of players you could pick. You could pick Puyo, you could pick Casillas, you could pick David Villa, you could pick Xavi, you could pick Iniesta as that greatest Spanish player of all time. I, I, I wouldn't want to just narrow it down to one because I honestly think I don't think I could just narrow it down to one. Yeah, I think there's quite. I think yeah, there's quite a few players. Casillas is a great show actually. Yeah. Of, of what he of what he did overall in terms of his career, starting out so young at Real Madrid and then winning it all. For, for Spain and Real Madrid as well. One of those Champions League Real Madrid won, played with some great players there. And then defenders-wise, Pio, Ramos, wonderful defenders. But yeah, Incredible, it's, hard, it's hard to pick, but if I went for one, I'd still go with Xavi, to be honest. But I think if you're picking, if you want to look at like one of the all-time teams ever, 
I have all the Spanish yeah. players who would get in that team, and I think Xavi probably would. Oh, Xavi would be shout. one of the first names on that team sheet, mate. Whereas if you look at all the other players, would they get in that team? I'm not sure. But that, that might be down to Xavi having one of the least sort of in demand positions. I'm not sure, but I think he'd be he'd be the only player who would get in one of those all time teams. Yeah. Maybe like that, the the the, I feel like I feel like with Xavi, I think he's best with Iniesta. Yeah. Although he was he was great at Barcelona before Iniesta came around. 2006, when they won, yes, he didn't play much at all, and he won it all with, with Barcelona that year, and was great. Yeah. So he, he played years before in yes, didn't he? Oh, a few years. So. That's it, he was playing with Ronaldinho, Deco in that midfield. Mm. So he went through, that's the re- yeah, that's difference there. between him and Iniesta. Xavi played in different era, more different areas at Barcelona. He played with, with Ronald, the Ronaldinho era, then played with the Messi era. Mm-hmm. Then, well, the, the MSN era. So he went, he went through different areas, which is quite a little bit different. And I think, going, going, let's rewind a bit more. So look, looking back when Xavi played in those early 2000s as well, I think one player we've got to consider here, well, I, I love this player. Mate, one of the players which made me love football, didn't win a band or came close a few times. It's probably might, when we say recent history, so we're talking since 2000, but this player might be just, just before that. His peak might have been just before that. He was playing in the early 2000s, but his peak was probably before. And this is a player who yeah. had a famous fear of flying, and it's Dennis Bergkamp, scorer of great goals. So, oh mate, Dennis, what a shout that is! What a shout, what a player he was, and he never quite won it. He, he had he had a few close close shades the early nineties, actually. Third in ninety two, second in ninety three, and everyone thought he was going to win it in ninety four. Win that Ballon d'Or, he'll he'll get that. But the Netherlands, the Dutch, they they left the World Cup in the quarterfinals. Um, in the USA, it was in the USA that year, Los Angeles, I think. No, well, it's everywhere in the USA. I don't know why I said Los Angeles. But yeah, everywhere in the USA. And they left the World Well, got knocked out of the World Cup to Brazil. So that seemed, as we talked about before, a theme of players needing to win a major competition. That put his, his hopes to an end that year. And then later years, he moved to Arsenal. Well, mm. I think it was 95, 96, moved to Arsenal. And they introduced him to, that, to the Premier League, bid it audience. And he was able to produce again some great moments there. He won three Premier Leagues, four FA Cups, but just couldn't get couldn't get that Ballon d'Or. And early, late nineties, early two thousands at Arsenal, what a player he was! Football, one of the greatest football. first touches in football history, Dan mm. Bergkamp. He brought Wenger's Absolutely. team to life. One, he made yeah. Wenger's team great at the beginning. Was Wenger's he great? He brought era. that flair, the flair back to back to football. What sort of Cantona left? If you get what I mean, mm-hmm. they were sort of yeah. a there was a break in between Katnar going and Bergkamp coming in. There was no real big flair player. Yeah. And he, like I said before, score of great goals. He got, he got the Premier League goal of the year twice. And most memorably, you think of that goal against Newcastle where he flicks the ball oh, around. You haven't seen a goal yeah. like that before. And a lot of people say, did he mean it? But I watched that goal at least once a week. And I, you know what he means, because otherwise, why would he flick it and be turning straight away? You, he'd, you'd, if he didn't mean you know exactly that, what he, he's going to do, he would, he would be like he'd be waiting. Like, where's the ball gone? But he was yeah. running around as soon as, as soon as the ball flicked. He knew what he was doing. Just score great goals. Intelligence at its at its best. And the best one of the best things about him, he, early early days, I actually was quite a, quite a goal scorer. He scored quite a few goals there. Always probably got around twenty goal mark. And then as he went on in his career. He had that football intelligence to know that I don't have that yard of pace now. I might not be the goal scorer, so I'm going to have to drop back. When he went to Arsenal, he's more... He got a few goals the early right. years. Like centre forward, goals. Bernie. Yeah. I'll play centre forward. I'll play that playmaker. I'm one of the best playmakers of the Premier League has seen when he was at Arsenal because he changed the position. Like, like a fine wine, he matured. He was yeah. absolutely brilliant in that playmaker role. We were setting up Henri. He set up loads of Henri goals. Had, had Pires next to him where he could fling the ball to then Lindbergh in the later years, I think the T and he, he just worked so well sort of adapting his role to that playmaker. And as you said before, that touch, that touch was absolutely beautiful. I think you think of that goal against Argentina in 1998 quarterfinal where the first time touched and flicks it inside and then scores that beautiful goal. One of the best World Cup goals of all time. Yeah, oh, mate, 100%. And you talk about his goals. The best ever Premier League hat trick, in my opinion, is that hat trick away at Leicester City. Every single goal that he scored that that night, that day, 
just incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. They could have his own. He could have his. He literally could have his own twenty-minute compilation of just fantastic goals that he scored throughout his career. Mm. Doesn't score tappings, does he? <laughs> no, definitely not. Just his t- like you might, the only player I can think of who gets close to him in terms of touch is Berbatov. Yeah, yeah. Berbatov, what he had, and I'm, there's always that clip of Berbatov at Fulham where he just sort of the ball just sticks with his feet as well. That's it. But he, Berbatov's the only other player, but Berbatov, he had that swagger as well. It just probably wasn't the same level as Bergkamp overall. He didn't he achieve a no. fair bit at United, but nowhere near as much. Bergkamp had three, he went. He was at Juventus, had Ajax, he had Arsenal, and great career with Netherlands when the major countries, whereas I don't think really Berbatov had the same thing, but he, he had that kind of same sort of swagger though. Fantastic. Really. Talent, but, fantastic. Talent. And he he won he won most things there was to win except from the Champions League. It's the only pretty thing which escaped him. But like I said before, in terms of how he changed it, the, the impressive thing about Bergkamp is how he changed his role from being that twenty five goal season striker at Ajax. I, don't, I think I said Juventus before. I meant Inter Milan. And then going to Inter Milan didn't work out completely, and then coming to Arsenal and being that great playmaker, getting mm-hmm. in the first few seasons getting like 10, 11, 12, 13 goals a season, and then. Later years become playmaker, getting all those assists, great assists is what he got, and just just being one of the most memorable players. It's been really great, great shout, Finch. That's a great. great I, shout. I think he is probably probably should have won it before the two thousand. So I've been quite cheeky getting yeah. him, but I think he deserved a deserved a he shout. He deserves a great, a big, big mention. Do you have anyone else prior two thousand era though who you feel should? Probably two thousand. I feel like there's one. I think because I've got one. I know that you're going to be on your list as well. Um, 2013 Ballon d'Or. Cristiano Ronaldo won it. Well, I know the one. I I, I know exactly. He, you know exactly what I'm going to say, and that is Frank Ribery. Yeah, an absolute an fantastic absolute. talent. Known for his great footballing ability, not his modelling skills, that can be said. No, not his looks. Definitely not his looks. <laughs> Sorry, Frank, if you're out there, but what a player you are. <laughs> oh, mate. Baller. Absolute baller. The, what a season he had as well. Was it like 40 goal contributions that year? Mm. Or, or Bayern Munich in a fantastic season. You know, he had the Champions League. Um, he won it all. He won, yeah. he won the league, Champions League, German Cup. Incredible, incredible player, a player that will go down in Bayern Munich's history as one of their one of their greatest. You know, and they've already got an array of fantastic talent in their history, and for Frank Ribery to be a part of that, you know, something that speaks for itself. Um, mm, but yeah, I, I completely agree. I'm just thinking. I actually think he could have a shout of being our, our top pick because he was, like you said, he was part of that famous Bayern side. You had Rob in the other wing. You had. Brightest strikers with like Gomez close, and then he ended up with Lewandowski. They won the, the league basically every year. Made made his mark yeah. in Europe. Got to two Champions League finals, won the Champions League with with Bayern. He won an unbelievable amount of times. He, he he won nine Bundesliga titles, which is a record. Six of their equivalent, six of their equivalent of FA Cups, something called like DFB Pokals or something like that. Um, yeah, UEFA Champions League, a FIFA. Club World Cup, and then he also got this is the crazy he got four doubles and a treble, so that's 24 titles over his time there. That's it's crazy. The, the reason I'm thinking it could could be him, our pick, is because although over many years, despite being like brilliant, when he played, his appearances were sort of restricted due to injuries, which ruled him out of the running for this kind of award. There was one year that 2013, 2012, 2013, where Myself, and I'm pretty sure quite a few people, I remember on Twitter at the time, there was quite a bit of controversy, where a lot of people were saying he should have won it ahead of Ronaldo because of how good he played that year. And like I said before, it sways it quite a bit when you win a big competition. He won the Champions League. That was the biggest competition there was to win that week, that year because you don't have you know, yeah. the Euros, you didn't have the World Cup. So no. the biggest competition out there was was the Champions League. And he, he won that. Was a key, yep. part, the most important part of it. Absolutely outstanding. He was getting assists left, right, and centre. All those goal contributions. Not not a goal scorer, but he was more of one of those old fashioned wingers. Got eleven goals that year still, which is not bad for, for what a key player in that in that run. Hmm. 
And he had, he had the most assists in the Bundesliga. He, like you said, an amazing amount of goal contributions. And over because of because of what he did for his team, how important he was. If we took him out, they wouldn't have won it. You can say that for definite. They wouldn't have won the Champions League. That's that's what I mean. No. They wouldn't have won it. And they might not have won a different another company. They might not have won their equivalent of well, their League Cup because of how good he was. And I think that that's probably a difference in how good he was that year. And I think although Messi and Ronaldo were good, good that year they didn't win the Champions League and they didn't inspire their teams to do that treble. So if you if you look at look at years where players were better than their peers, Ribery might have actually been better than Ronaldo and Messi that year, which is some feat. Yeah, but I remember you said about Twitter. I remember Twitter going pretty, pretty crazy that Ribery didn't actually didn't actually win it. Ronaldo did. Everyone thought mm. that was a bit of a bit of a farce, a bit of a robbery from from um, from the Ballon d'Or that year. Mm. It's the most. I'm just thinking recent history since obviously we were pretty young, but in terms of when I like recollect things and look look back at times where there was a bit of like controversy and a bit of fury on Twitter. Like who won, and I think that probably comes out on top in how how much like fury there was. Not fury, I mean, but like comments saying, "Oh, that's 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 not right." Ribery should have won it. There's there's quite a lot of that on Twitter. And I think Ribery says that to the to the day. And actually, that year he won the UEFA award for the best player. And well, I mean, I yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I think the thing which which three really shows how how good he was that year. To, yeah, Messi, Ronaldo, goddess, gods of football. Will be the best, best, ever. best, best players of all time. Like you said, to get out of that era, no one, no one was getting close to him at that point. And then, no, if you, if you look at the voting for the Ballon d'Or year, this this shows how good he was and how close he was to getting it. And probably shows that he probably should have got it because of how how close it was. Ronaldo got twenty seven point nine nine percent of the vote. Messi mm-hmm. got twenty four point seven two percent, and Ribery got twenty three point three six, which is so tight. A few few votes could have changed it. Whereas most years, yeah. you had the player went getting fifty percent of the vote. So to get every player to be within one or two percent of each other, Ribery was doing something right, and he probably probably should have went to get that close to the greats. He didn't have the name, didn't have the brand as they did, and that that might have swayed it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. I, I think if we're looking at a player who should have won it in a season where he was brilliant and better than his peers rather than players like we said before who would have won it in different eras. Ribery has mm. got to be pretty close to that top. I agree. I, I completely agree, mate. And you think since then, there's no one really challenged Messi or Ronaldo as, as much as Ribery did in that 2000, mm. 2013 year. Yeah, and I, I don't think... I, I think the mind. Ribery, M- Modric obviously has won it since, since that time. Mm-hmm. But I do think Rivery deserved it more than Modric. I don't think Modric mm-hmm. deserved it as much. I don't think so. so I th- honestly, I think Messi deserved that year. I didn't say, on this poll, I didn't say Messi um, as a pick because I feel like that's too much of a of an obvious choice. Yeah, when, well, obviously, we're, we're talking about players who have never won it at all as well. Not players who mm-hmm. never won it in a year. Whereas Messi's won it. Messi's an all-time record holder, isn't he, with Ronaldo? Five. Join. Five Ballon d'Ors with one, so... That's crazy, isn't so, it? They're both in the same round. Yeah. I remember I think, yeah, Messi well, was way ahead, weren't he, for a while? And then Ronaldo came back. They had a free, had a free uh, Ballon d'Or lead, I believe. Then Ronaldo just kept winning those Champions Leagues. Yep. Incredible that's, power. That's, that's what swayed it, but... But yeah, that is crazy. Both both the same amount of Ballon d'Ors, and that is the Messi-Ronaldo <laughs> era. Where you had Kaká and Modric either side of it. Kaka, you know, one of the all-time greats, and you got. Would you say Luka Modric would go down as an all-time great? Only in early in Croatia. <laughs> I mean, what what is absolutely amazing player, absolutely crazy part of one of the best teams, one of the one of the sort of outsider best teams of all time. You got to put Barcelona a bit above Barcelona, a famous team with with the MSN, probably a little bit above that Real Madrid team, which won have won the Champions League two times in a row. Three times over four years was it? Well, yeah, I probably would. I probably would put Modric up there with certainly one of the, the top twenty, thirty midfielders of all time. One of the best midfielders of his generation, definitely. In terms of how well he's done at Madrid, being that he's been a key part of that midfield. And mm-hmm. I remember at the beginning, people giving him stick when he went from Tottenham to Madrid, and then he scored that goal against United in the Champions League. It really ignited his ignited his career there. 
I think yeah. he has never looked back since then. Been unbelievable. And then the Croatia was unbelievable that World Cup 2018. But don't think he did enough to... Still an unbelievable player, but he didn't do enough, I don't think, to win that Ballon d'Or. To win that Ballon d'Or, no. He, um, you know, he had a good World Cup um, campaign getting Croatia mm. to the... I wouldn't say he was like the key part of that champion of that World Cup uh, squad for Croatia, though. I thought mm. there was uh, more stand-up players. Obviously, he was a captain, though, Perisic, wasn't he? I think Perisic deserves a big acclaim for that World Cup uh, World Cup team. Mm. Yeah, still, he scored. I think he scored one on, one or two goals in that World Cup, but important. I mean, he, scored, he, he scored a great goal against Argentina. Mm. Yeah, he did. But yeah, like you said, I think there's other players who did did come up trumps like Perisic, like Mandzukic, and I'm just thinking of the goals against England there, but yeah, those yeah. players. Yeah. But I think it's not what absolutely amazing player, but when you look at I'm just like you said before, is he gonna go down as one of the best of all time? He, he, he no, one of the great so. players, but I don't think he, he I don't think he will because there's so many great midfielders. There's nothing to do with not to do a player he was, but it's just down to the competition there is for, throughout the era. You had in his era as well. You just you had Chavi, you had Iniesta, who I'd rank above him. Um, yeah. Also because they've won every, everything on the international competitions. Then you, you had midfielders like Zidane, like Vieira, even players like Conte. I think are irreplaceable. Whereas I think yeah. Modric is he irreplaceable? Great, great, great midfielder. But is he like saying before about Iniesta in that team? Is he in, irreplaceable? I think you could have got a different player in there. Maybe could have for Real Madrid. Yeah, you could you thing. could have t- Tony Cruz do his role. Mm. So, so there is that's, that's probably why I think probably not. Yeah, as one you of the best you, of all time. Definitely one of the best, maybe the best Croatian player of all time. But yeah. in terms of overall best best midfielders of all time, there's there's a lot of lot of midfielders in that. And you put yeah, if you, even if you count like likes of Kaká as attacking midfielder, Ronaldinho maybe Ronaldinho was more of a one the front three, but even he plays. In the attacking midfield role sometimes, so those, those kind of players you probably would put ahead of, ahead of, um, yeah. ahead of him. And yeah, there's, there's so many great midfielders. I'm just just thinking now, even even Lampard or Gerrard, probably the same level as Lentil, I'd say. That's what probably probably where I'd put him. That Lampard Gerrard level. So you put him as, as high as, as that. You put him as high yeah, as Lampard Gerrard. I probably because really? he, he's won the same amount as them. He's won more Champions Leagues than them. Although he, yeah. he, the thing, the difference is with him with Modric. So he, he's he was part of a bet. They were part of great sides, Gerard and Lampard. But they, they both weren't part of as good a side as Modric has been. So that's probably helped him out a bit more. But obviously, a player makes a great side. So there is a difference yeah. there. But a, a similar, maybe not as good, but probably a similar sort of kind of bracket. That's what maybe he was low the bracket. They're the top of the bracket. But I think a similar kind of maybe, bracket as Gerard I, and Lampard. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm biased. But I put I put Lampard ahead of Gerard, and I probably put. Modric just before Gerard in the ranking. Mm, well, I think I think they they're both all the same. They're going to be. I think they're all the same bracket in terms of where they're being because Gerard and Lampard similar similar well same era. Obviously, they both inspire teams doing things, but Gerard inspires teams in the Champions League, where it was a very very poor team. Lampard, obviously, great career overall, one absolute goal scorer, goal scorer machine yep. midfielder. But I, I both of them didn't win anything international level. And no. they both did great at club level, but I think they both the same bracket overall in terms of in terms of where they were as players throughout history. You had players like Sedan, Xavi, Iniesta. I think the next level, which is because of what what have done throughout history, throughout throughout their club and international signs. Yeah, there's, that's, there's, uh, there's fair probably, enough. There's probably there's plenty of players probably who throughout history who did absolutely amazing for the international sides and club sides, and that that probably gives them. A little bit, a little bit of the edge in terms of sort of the best midfielders of all time. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Mm. So, are we going to make a a decision then on the greatest player to have never won the Ballon d'Or post two thousand? I think it's, oh, I think we're looking at the two here. In my opinion, I think we're looking at Omri and I think we're looking at Ribery. Who are you swearing towards? I'm swearing towards my first bit, which is Thierry Omri. I mean, it depends what we're looking at. Because I think Ribery, 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 he could have run it in those three, three, three years, Thierry Henry could exactly. have run it. But in terms exactly. of how Ribery, so Henry maybe should have run it in those three years, but I think Ribery is definitely one season where he should have won it. He won everything there was to win that year, everything. So 
because there's only club level competitions to win it here. So he won everything that was inspired his team to that. Whereas you look at Henri, every, great individually, every year he should have won it, but he didn't win the major club competitions in those years. Those years he was great individually. So he won, he won the major he club went. No, international competitions, sorry, I meant international competitions those years. Yeah. Or all club competitions in terms of the Champions League those years as well. But he, he won those major competitions in eras. He probably wasn't at his peak. So between 2003, 2006, he was at his peak. But he, he was he was sustained. He sustained a great peak in those years and the level he was at. Whereas Rivery, it was probably one year where he really got to that level of greatness. But I think that level of greatness may have been a little bit above Henri's in that overall period. I'm, I'm not sure really how to how to play that. I'm going. I'm. I'm sticking with Thierry. I feel like Thierry deserves this. This second, like, you can't think. Fitch three times. You think he was. Mm. I wouldn't say he was robbed of all three times, but definitely a couple of times. You think, yeah, Thierry really deserved that. The amount of goals that that guy scored, he really carried that Arsenal team, and, and especially in that 2006 run, he really carried that Arsenal. Yeah, it's the Real Madrid goal, wasn't it? That, that yeah, wonderful so solo goal. Yeah, he really held him on his back. He was captain for. a for a while as well of Arsenal. It's mm. a score of incredible goals, score of goals that could win the Pushkas Award. He, mm. you think of Arsenal and you think Thierry Henry, you think of Bayern Munich, do you think of Frank Ribéry? Mm. Well, no, okay, I'm, I'm just thinking now, I'm going back, I, I think I sway towards Ribéry because I, I got a bit excited with those, because we just talked about it and I think that's, that's what got me. I'm now thinking the stats of Henry. To get yeah. the Golden Boot four times, to be the only ever playing, the Premier League, the best league in the world, the best league that's ever been. It, the, only player exactly to, the, best, the only player to have scored more than 20 goals in five successive years. And we look at some exactly. of the players in that think, league. We've had Aguero, yeah. we've had Cantona, we've had Van Nistelrooy, we've had some absolute swing. We've had Suarez, we've had some, he wasn't there five years, but we still had Suarez. We've had Rooney, Drogba. we've had Drogba, we've had some absolutely incredible strikes. And he's the only one to have got that consistency of 20. 20 or more goals in five years. He won the Golden Boot and it's not just the goal scoring. This is what probably is making me sway towards it. He got the assist, didn't he? 20 exactly. assists in that, got one year, that record. And then he has, he has won it all. So over his career, he's won everything. And there is, there is three years, I think. I think, like you said, if, if stuff went a little bit different, 2001, he should have definitely got, 2003, sorry, he should have definitely got ahead of Nedved. I yep. think never what a player, but I don't know if he should Fairly have got deserved it. Yeah, I, I don't think you really need it. Well, I don't know you did need it, obviously, but I don't think you I think that's one, of years, as much. that's one of the years we can say Thierry Henry was robbed. Yeah, I think if he, he was robbed late. In terms of his stats, absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. But, mm-hmm. yeah, he, he, was, he was a little bit robbed. In terms of, it's just because probably Arsenal did not win the league that year. Yeah, that might exactly it. And then they won the league the following year. And he still doesn't get it. Hmm. But uh, yeah, and that was that was the invincible year. I, th- I think it's just yeah, it's just been unlucky because his when when he's been absolutely he's been individually brilliant. He was individually brilliant for several seasons, but when he was at his absolute peak in terms of seasons, he didn't win the, that club competition to push him over the edge. Probably in terms of winning winning the Ballon d'Or, mm. but I still think he yeah. should have won it in terms of his what he did. Just individually, in terms of his goal getting, even though he didn't didn't win the Premier League in the say 2003, didn't win the Champions in 2006. In terms of what he actually, what he actually did himself in inspiring that his team to 2006 to the to that final in the Champions League, mm-hmm. and then he lost to a great Barcelona side. And just his overall consistency probably does put him ahead of the rest and give him give him the best shout. Well, I think I'm swearing towards him, you know. I've, You've seen the light, Finch. I love it. I mm. love it. And Are we saying Thierry Henry? He has, he has one. Of, well, I think I've got to pick one year as well. I'm thinking now. So we're talking mostly. So 2004, Shevchenko won it, didn't he? Yeah. So I think, although he should have won it, I think he should have won it three times. I think he should have won it being three time Ballon d'Or winner. Because yeah. I'm trying to align here with Rivery in terms of what Rivery won in that year. I think, to, if we, and we look, we're just going to be looking at one season, one year where a player should have won it. I think 2003, 2004, because Arsenal went invincible. Thierry Henry had his best goal scoring season he had over, over his whole career. He got 30 goals, 37 appearances that year. It was so, so good. I think he got a fair amount of assists as well that year. 
yeah. and what, what what a player he was in 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 that season where he should have to get a club side to get become invincible in that season and he's and to get the goals he got. And he still didn't win the Ballon d'Or. Shevchenko, what a European player he was. Golden but, Boot. European but this, Golden Boot. PFA Player of the Year. This is what we talked this season for Arsenal. He inspired a club side to go and beat him. This is never going to be repeated. And no. it actually been reflected in terms of what, what he won himself. And he and carried like a lot of them results, Finch. He carried a lot of them results. I think he said about Ribery uh, really mm. helping Bayern Munich to that treble. But you've got to think Bayern Munich do that every single year, pretty much, in that... Mm. In that German league, not, not the Champions League, though. Not the Champions League, no. I do agree with the Champions League, although they have won the Champions League a lot previous to this. Um, mm. Some so time ago, it was early 2000s. Nine, nine seasons in a row, you said that Rivery won the Bundesliga. Yeah. Finch. Well, nine nine titles in total, yeah. Yeah, I think Bayern Munich will do that again, you know, without Rivery, without mm. Robin. And it's show, they're showing now they are doing it. Last two years mm. they've won the league quite convincingly. So, yeah. I, I guess it's, it's a Champions League, isn't it? Which makes it stand out. But like yeah. we said before, the thing, the thing which is making Henri stand out, and like, I'm picking that year, 2003, 2004, because he won the best club competition out there and they went unbeaten. So it equates yeah. personal success in terms of his goal getting and assists and what a player he was with the club success of winning the league and going unbeaten. So those two together. I think you can't deny that he needs that award. Yeah. I think we should say that Thierry Henry is the, is the greatest player to have never won the Ballon d'Or. Since 2000. Since, yeah, since 2000, of course. So that's that's another podcast done and we've chosen our player, spoken about the best players to have never won Ballon d'Or since 2000. I hope, hope you guys enjoyed it and be sure to come back for next week. Yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>